Hello legends and super legends. Welcome to Velo Harmony. Today I want to talk about off-season, cycling off-season and how you embrace it and how you deal with it. The significance of cycling off-season is that there are a lot of riders, most riders getting into cycling initially, you, you, get, the, you get the bug, you're excited, you see your improvement as you ride more and more. There's a tendency to just keep wanting to do more and more. And you have to be careful about that because it can lead to burnout. So what I want to do is introduce you guys. Those of you who already know, you can kind of bear with me because there are other things I'm going to throw in. But the, the main cycling all, uh, season is from January to the middle of October. Uh, nowadays, like the pro racers, they're, like even Team Sky is sending a team to China and it's mid-October already to do their last race. So their, their season is through the end of October. But for the most part, for time immemorial, it has been from January to around after the World Championships, usually. And that's usually late in the season after September into October. So by mid-October, a lot of the riders, like the tour contenders like Froome, Le Mans, all those guys, they're back home resting. And what that means, it doesn't mean you don't ride your bike. So around mid-October, which is what we're in now, if you've trained all year, and you're at this point of mid-October, you have to pay attention to what your body and your mind is telling you. Are you excited? Are you still excited to get out on your bike? If not, now's the time to take a break. Take a couple of weeks. Go see the family and friends that you have not been seeing because you've been riding and doing the grand fondos and races or whatever else. Go hang out with them. This is also a good time to do other sports. Maybe you can swim. Simon Moser asked on one of his comments whether swimming is okay. Swimming is great. You can swim. You could run if you weren't doing that. If you have no desire to get out on your bike because you've been training all year hard, take a break. Take a couple of weeks away from the bike completely, but don't stop exercise altogether. Do other things. Go play tennis, whatever sport you're into. Go hiking. If you're up north and, and, and the opportunity comes to go cross-country skiing, you know, October is kind of early. You probably haven't gotten snow yet. I mean, depending on what part of the world you're in, you can now start doing other sports aerobically because cross-country skiing is a great alternative to cycling. The motions are similar, you know, and they stress your aerobic system. It stress your aerobic system just like cycling. Or you could play soccer, whatever. But right now, mid-October, you don't have to ride if you don't want to. Take a couple of weeks and just let the bike sit. You know, now's the time to go see the doctor if you have any kind of ailments that's been bothering you. Get your teeth checked, whatever, your annual physical. Do all of that so that you know you're 100% healthy when your training starts in November. And the reason I'm stressing that is you have to ask yourself, how's my, what I call, out the door? Are you excited to get out the door on your bike? If you still are, you're not training during this time. You know, you've been training all year. Leave the heart rate monitor at home. Just go for a ride if you still want to ride your bike. Ride every other day. And then use the other time to do other hobbies or whatever. Or just sit around the house watching cartoons, listening to music. Whatever you're into. Whatever you, you feel. Because what you want to do is you're recharging your batteries physically and mentally. You don't want to feel like you got to keep training. You're not going to miss out on anything. Now's the time to take a little bit of downtown and ease off. You know? Um, it's a good opportunity to not feel guilty about not being on the bike. But don't stop everything completely. If you want to incorporate weights, feel free. But gradually get into that because you haven't been doing it all year. So, you know, don't go in there trying to set no power lifting record. You know, go do light weights, a lot of reps, if that's what you're eager to do. Whatever activity, go for a walk. Just get out. You know, hang out for a couple of weeks. And so then if you have things planned for the season, like rides or whatever else you're going to do, don't wait till January 1st that everybody else does and then go hammer yourself because it's New Year's Day. And you're going to do a resolution, all that foolishness. Don't do that. Start back in November, but steady endurance pace. Uh, there's a guy I'm working with, Ranjit. I'm still waiting for him to send me some final pieces of information so I can build a training plan. Because the training plan I'm building would be based on where he is for his fitness. So when I say endurance pace, it's going to vary for everybody. Uh, I'm building a program also for Jose Santiago, who has sent me his threshold numbers. 
and I will use that, but that's not permanent. It always has to be adjusted as you go forward, as you get fitter, you know? So November, December is the time to get out and just do the long rides. And that's why we're going to do the Rafa festive 500. It doesn't mean you're going slow. You're going steady. You're not doing intervals. You're just going steady. Now for me, my season does not go from January to mid October in July is when I rest. It's so hot down here in the summer. July is when I take two weeks off for my rest period. I still ride, but I'm not training. I may ride indoors or go out very early, but that's when I rest because I love this time of year. So I've already had my rest and I love this time of year. This is when I start building. I do a lot of strength, climbing, muscular endurance stuff. That's when I do that. And that's what you want to do in November and December when you get back. Some people go into the gym to do weights. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But just be careful about it so you don't build muscles that you don't use on a bike. I personally prefer to do my strength training on the bike. So I build my, my muscles specific for cycling because I have a genetic setup to where when I go in the gym, I bulk up. And so I don't want to build any extra muscles. I mean, I'm 89 kilos. So if I go in the gym, I might put on two kilos extra that I may not use necessarily in cycling. They're not cycling specific necessarily. So I use the gym sparingly to supplement. I made a video about the best, best gym exercises for cyclists. I do most of my gym work right here in the studio on my total gym because it uses my body's resistance and gravity. And that's the kind, it's close to calisthenics. And of course I stretch. So this time of year is the time to back off and you only want to start doing your zone two in November, December to just build a strong aerobic base so that come January, you're starting off on a high platform. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. So in summary, at the end of the season, if you feel like riding, continue riding, but don't train this time of year in October. Take, take these couple of weeks. If you feel like still riding your bike, Get your mind off of it. Just go ride your bike. Enjoy the sights that you may not have been seeing when you were on the rivet. You can do the same courses, but look, look, look at the roads and look at what's around this time of year for a couple of weeks and ride every other day. Don't feel like you got to ride every day. But by all means, if you're still eager to ride and you're out the door is A plus, meaning that you're anxious to get out and ride your bike, go ride your bike. But you're not really training. Just go and ride. Even if you take your heart rate monitor, Keep the zones in, in the endurance zone, one and two. Hold back. You'll be like a racehorse ready to go come January. You don't want to hammer yourself too early and then burn out later in the year. So it's really important that you do that. So I wanted to make this quick video to talk about how you handle the off season. So you use this time to build back your strength, go see the doctor, make sure you physically fine, hang out with your family and whatever for, you know, this period of time in October. And then come November, you can get back into training, but you don't need to start training five, six days a week, whatever your schedule allows and just do zone one and zone two, because all you're doing is you're trying to maintain the endurance that you gain during the season in November and December. And then you can start building back up. Now it depends on what you're training for. If you're training for an event that's early in the year, maybe March, April, you may want to step it up a little bit in November and December and maybe ride more days and still build. So it depends on your objectives for the season. But if you're just somebody who you have sportives that are not coming on until like April or you maybe March. Yeah. November, or December is not the time to hammer yourself. It's the time to build your, your, your muscular endurance and your aerobic endurance. There are specific workouts for those that I give out to people to do in November and December. That's when you work on your weaknesses. So if your weakness was climbing, go do the endurance ride in the hills. Stay in the, the lower zones and just learn how to ride the hills and get those sensations. You know, we're not talking about threshold work. You know, you can ride hills and not hammer them. You would use lower gears, but you're still going to be working on more force. That's the key. So... I hope this will help those of you. This is just a, a, a little quick pointer that I wanted to do about off season stuff. So feel free to use as much of the off season as you want to do alternative sports, not just the two weeks that I said that you're actually off. The two weeks in mid, from mid October to the end of October are for those people that are sick of riding. Let the bike sit down 
until you're eager again to get on it and go do other things. Those of you who still want to ride, ride every other day and then do other sports. Whatever it is you want to do. You want to swim, you want to run, whatever. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up and say, get out there, get your miles in and take care of yourself while you're out there.